The following tutorial is brought to you by wholeloops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today, we're talking about mastering. I've broken down my track Hands on My Knees, featuring Awesome and Ultra Cat, down into four mix stems. The reason I'm doing them as mix stems is because we're going to be doing some mixed compression and mixed distortion before it gets to the master channel. Let's start out by listening to the finished product. Hands on my knees. That's right, though. No. That's right, though. No. That's right, that's right, though. No. Then I like to. No. That's right, though. No. That's right, though. No. That's right, that's right, though. No. Then I. All right. Um, I'm going to delete all these and we can put them back together ourselves. Um, so the first thing I want to do to these is some parallel compression. And the way we're going to set this up is with the return track with our Waves API 2500 compressor on it. Uh, we're going to send these all, let's see, I'm going to send these at minus 10. And then I'm going to actually turn the drums down because I don't want them to be quite as loud in the signal going to the compressor. And also with the effects, they don't need to be that loud either because the compressor is going to make them real loud. Uh, so let's go down to our compressor and get our song looping play it into here and see what we got. Let's also turn off our master chain. Alright. Let's do some compression. Turn that threshold up. Nice slow attack. Keep the drums punchy. Let's actually solo this. This is what we're going to mix with the clean, uncompressed signal. So we're going to make this super compressed. Maybe a nice fast attack. Keep the tails sounding loud. My favorite in the tone controls, these settings right here. Um, these sound really good. I usually leave this at 100%. But what you're left with is uh, kind of quiet. So let's turn on some makeup gain. Bump that up like about 10. Because we're turning it down about, yeah. Turning it down a lot with the threshold. And there we have it. Next, we're going to do some distorting. I can use the camel crusher. We're going to be sending both of these at about minus 10 to our distortion group. Let's just solo our distortion group to hear what we're doing. Sorry about that. That was real loud. Uh, Do you produce music and love making hot club bangers? Do you find yourself constantly searching for those crispy snares and percussions? Do you want your beats to make people turn up? Maybe it's time you stepped up your sample pack library. Here at Whole Loops, we've got the product for you. Introducing Raw Hits, our debut sample pack of organically grown drum one shots, loops, FX, vocal samples, and all the production essentials you'll need to add some organic flavor to your secret sauce. Raw Hits is available now only at wholeloops.com. First, we're going to turn off fat mode. We're going to turn off compressor. We're really just going to be using this distortion. And we'll turn the volume of that up too. Let's unsold this and see what we got. Let's actually turn these down. They're both kind of loud. This is kind of where you can mix the balance between your compressed and distorted signal and your dry signal. Like it around there. Let's start turning on our master chain. Let's turn off all these plugins. Do these one at a time. Starting with Fab Filter Pro Q2. I pretty much roll off every song at 24. I find the bass just kind of resonates well around there. 
Um, and then after that, I did some frequency sweeping to find the ones that were ringing. You just bump these up, grab the headphones. I'm oh, sorry, go up here and grab the headphones. Hold it down, click and drag it. Pick a frequency that you don't think sounds good. Then I like to and just drop it down with the gain. I ended up finding here when I did it earlier. Did have found another one over here. I did a more in-depth tutorial on frequency sweeping in my vocal processing tutorial. I'll put a link to that in the description so that we can move on to our isotope exciter. All I did was just boost the mids boost the highs a little bit, kind of left everything else untouched. Helps it pop out a little bit. That's what I like. I like it when it pops out a little bit. Next plugin is our BX control. All I did was really just boost up the stereo with, this is going to kind of spread the high end, make your song seem like it's a little bit uh, wider in the stereo field. Kind of increases the perceived loudness of it. And then our final plugin is doing the majority of the work. Switched it to the IRC4. Transient's my favorite for this. Kind of pull it down until the uh, red attenuation starts coming down from the top. And then that's where you back it off and find the sweet spot. And what you're left with is a very useful, very versatile, and very quick and easy mastering chain that you could either toss on a two track or go through with the compression and distortion as we did here. Um, but I find that this order of plugins has consistently worked very well in any of the source material that I dropped it on. And of course, none of the knob positions in my song are going to sound correct in your song. This is just a uh, starting point, as you could say. I'll be doing more mastering tutorials in the future using different types of plugins. I use a lot of different plugins, and uh, I'm happy to talk about all of them. If there's anything you'd like to see, leave me a comment. Thank you for subscribing. I'll see you next week for Tutorial Tuesday.